Hey everyone, I'm Anish and welcome back to Profusion. So today we'll be starting a new chapter in the frequency response itself that is the Bode plots. So this is a very simple chapter and very uh, scoring chapter. So just uh, you have to know few things, few important key points and you will be able to score full marks in this. So do listen to carefully that whatever I'm saying, whatever I'm explaining, do listen to this and at least one to two marks you can expect from this uh, chapter at least I can I can expect. So let's uh, start. First, we'll clear our basics. What is our basics? Basics is basis of logarithm. So people directly go into the Bode plot and they don't understand how logarithms work. What is a scale? What are the different decades and octave? What do you mean by decades and what do you mean by octave? All those things. What do you mean by slopes? So first, we'll try to clear our basics. Then we'll uh, go to the main topic that is Bode plots. If we clear our basics, then Understanding Bode plots is very simple. What is Bode plot? Bode plot is basically a approximate plot of the actual frequency response. And uh, we approximate it with few rules. Uh, how we approximate it, we'll understand. But first, uh, but first let's clear our basics. So uh, until now we have studied, like we, if you want to study frequency response, what do we do? We have a uh, closed loop system like this. And we give some sinusoid input of some frequency omega and we vary that frequency and we measure the output frequency and the output frequency for a LTS system is also a sinusoid of the same frequency but with different amplitude and phase. So uh, first let me derive like uh, write down few things here like what what is the response and stuff like let me first write down the transfer function let me first write down the transfer function. So if I write down the transfer function so from figure From figure, what do you get? We get that my g of s equals to like uh, let let my g of s equals to one over s. So assuming g of s is one over s. So if g of s is one over s, then and also my h of s is one. So let's find the uh, this from figure should be in the bottom actually. First, we're assuming these things. And then we are from the figure, we'll derive the transfer function for this. So what will my transfer function? So transfer function T of S will be what? G of S upon 1 plus G of S into H of S. Now this is 1 over S divided by 1 plus 1 over S. Now what does this become? This becomes 1 by s plus 1 so this equals 1 by s plus 1 now as we are interested in the frequency response so obviously we'll replace what s with g omega so if we replace s with g omega let me use another color g omega plus one so now here what do we observe is this is a combination of two things real and imaginary parts so this has two things it's real and imaginary part so this has one magnitude angle minus tan inverse omega so this has two components hence that's why this is a complex number right so if you, if you do the uh, rationalization then also you can understand this is a real part and a complex part so if you want to do the rationalization what do you do if you want to do the rationalization one minus g omega to have a one plus omega square now what uh, does this become so this becomes 1 divided by 1 plus omega square minus g omega by one plus omega square so uh, this becomes this one so here we have a real part and a 
complex part so obviously this is a complex number so if this is a complex number this will have its magnitude and phase so obviously i can write my t of j omega like this this magnitude of t of j omega as i wrote in the previous case and the phase angle obviously angle of t of j omega so this is how i can write it now here what we do is we to understand the frequency response obviously we need to plot this one so what we do is we plot these two things these two things and these are called one is called the magnitude response and another one is called as the phase response so this we plot magnitude of c of j omega that in polar part what we should do we used to plot it in one axis right uh, like we had a real of t of j omega and imagining of t of j omega so all of this information we would have gotten in one axis but in bode plots what we do we get one information from one of the plots and the other information from the other other plot so about the magnitude information we get from the magnitude response and from the for the phase uh, information we get from the phase response so in bode plots we plot we plot two graphs so that is why uh, i wanted to write this T of J omega versus omega. So this will be simply known as magnitude response. And this is. Known as T of J omega versus omega, and this is known as phase response. So these are the two things that we plot plot in Bode plots basically. So this this is the brief overview I wanted to give. Now let's come back to our basics of logarithm. So I hope like this is we have already studied in class eight or tenth something. So what are the basics of logarithm? So here uh, if Some equation is like uh, written like this that log a x log x to the base a equals to y. What does that means? That means that a raised to the power y equals to x itself. So this is the meaning of logarithm, right? This is the meaning of logarithm. So now let's understand few properties of logarithm. So first property is log a a log a base a. So what what is the value of log a base a? It is simply equals to one. Simply equals to one. Why? Why is this a case? Simple, right? You use the basic definition. So here, if you put like this equals to y, then uh, then my a raised to power y should be equals to a itself. And what what uh, what power of what value of y gives me a again back only one, right? A raised to power one will be one. So that's why y will will be equals to one. Okay. And what is log one uh, base a? What is it? Log one base a is very simple. One raised to power y should be equals to a. Sorry, uh, sorry, I'm talking different. So uh, a raised to power a raised to power this y should be equals to one. A raised to power y should be equals to one. So A raised to power y should be equal to one. And what what value of y gives me that a, y equals to zero simply. So y will be equal to y will simply equal to zero. So this will be simply zero. Okay. So what is the next property? So here we have log a x square should be equal to what? So this we can write simply two log 
ax if you remember this two comes in front of this so how does this happen basically like there is another property first i will like explain this property so log m cross n m times m should be uh, equals to log m plus log n so here we have log a m like base will be same log b n how is this a case so this is not b sorry this is a so simply just assume that log or put i will just use different color log a mn equals to y then a raised to power y equals to uh, m times n now let uh, this y1 equals to log a m i'm just proving in rough and this y2 equals to log a n so if we just use the same a raised to power y1 equals to m and a raised to power y2 equals to n now simply just multiply these two m n equals to a raised to power y1 plus y2 now can we understand this definition okay can we go back to this definition like y1 was equals to log a m now this is some raised to the power a raised to the power and the uh, answer is m into n so what will happen i can convert this back into log equation what will the log equation power will be here y1 plus y2 equals to log base will be a m n now what is y1 y1 is log a m and what is y2 y2 is log a n so replace y1 log a n plus log a n is equals to log a m n so simply that is how you can prove it obviously I will, I will remove this just to like uh, refresh our memories how this uh, all this derivation come so here if you see that this is the property log m times n equals to log a m plus log n so i will just to uh, use this property here not here so we're confused now this one obviously how you can derive it simply how is this written this is log a x times x hence what is this this is m into n so log a x plus log a x again x is same so 2 times log a x because x is same here so that's why this becomes log a x plus log a x so this becomes 2 times log a x so this one becomes this so that's how like i'm not writing the proofs here and like homework for you just try to refresh your memory how you get log a by m minus n to log a m minus this is for your homework that you derive this one log a n okay so yeah, this is the uh, basic few properties that we have to keep in mind while using the logarithms because mainly we will use the logarithms now let's come to one thing understand what is decade and what is octave let's just understand the basic meaning of this though things then we'll uh, go deeper dive into it later deep dive into this later so understand what is decade what is decade so decade is basically uh, 10 times in decade scale so what do you mean by the decade scale let's under let's uh, first understand this let's say we have two scales okay i will explain this again in the next few slides just i'm giving you uh let me one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so what is this scale this scale is linear because here the distance is linear distance is linear so this is linear scale this is what we do just uh, you when you uh, go to your shop or stationery shop you t uh, ask the shopkeeper that i want to buy a graph paper he asks you what type of graph paper you want uh, generally uh, since childhood we have been buying the mm graph paper whose distance is same if you measure the each uh, distance in the uh, axis in the graph paper you will see they are same itself okay one same itself 
Now what is happening here? So this is a linear scale. Now what is a decade scale? So decade scale is simply like this. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four. Now here I may write one, two, three, four. Here you may say the distance is still same, sir. Yes, the distance is same. But what is difference here? The difference is this is a decade scale and not a linear scale. Then what changes? If this is a decade scale, then this one actually is one here. That is fine. But this two isn't one, um, two because every time we are moving one decade. So this difference is one decade. So this difference is one unit, right? And here also, like in linear scale, if we move one unit, our value increases by one, whatever scale it is. Now, if I move here one unit, what happens is, if I move here one unit, if I move one unit here, then my actual value increases to 10 times. So it increases 10 times. Like it gets multiplied by 10 times. So here, let's say if I had like this was one or if I had some Omega value, let's say at this scale, I have some Omega value, I, like whatever the Omega can be anything. I'm just talking about the scale. You buy a scale, you buy a simple scale. I'm just talking about the scale. What does this one centimeter represent? We can convert this one centimeter to multiple things, right? So here one centimeter represents whatever the previous value was. It is the 10 times of that. So here, if this value was Omega, then this distance here will be 10 times omega. And what will be this distance? This will be again 10 times of the previous one. All these are spaced by one unit. Okay, one unit. So this is this is a simple scaling. Why we'll understand why we do this. So this will become again 10 times the previous one, which is 100 omega. Okay, this is about the decade scale. So this is the scale that we'll use in our body plots. So why all this we'll understand. Now let's understand about the octave scale. So I hope you got the decade scale. What is the decade scale? The diff like distance is same one unit here also one unit distance. But here, if if we walk one unit, then only my value value is increasing by one plus one linear scale plus one. But here in the decade scale, like this will logarithmically increase. But uh, how I will tell you. But if I just walk one unit distance, that means whatever my previous value was, now it became 10 times of that. So previously, let's say I have omega value. Now it became 10 omega. If I walked another one unit distance, then whatever my previous value was two, I had 10 omega. Now it will become 100 omega. If I walk two unit distance, whatever my previous value was, it, it will now become 100. How? 10 square. It became 10 to the power one here, 10 square. It, it becomes 10 multiple of 10s. I will explain this in later slides just to give you a brief overview now. Now, what is the octave scale? octave scale so I will write here that in decade scale if I travel one unit distance let me write this in the next question then if i travel one distance then uh what else if i travel one you know distance then my value gets multiplied by 10 of previous value and this is about the ticket scale so ticket scale will come here and what about the linear scale what about the linear scale so for linear scale,
if I walk, let me change crop this to here. This is octave one, right? So linear scale. Basically, what will happen every time I walk, travel one unit distance. What does that mean? That means by it increases by one only. It doesn't get multiplied. It increases by one. Adds by one gets added or uh, increases by one of previous one of the previous one So this is what my linear scale is uh, and this is my decade scale. So just giving you a brief idea about the decade scale itself. So the, uh, this is what happens in a decade scale. Now let's understand what happens in an octave scale. So if you have an octave scale, okay, I'm talking about the X axis because that, that is what will vary. That is what like Y will be dependent on the X axis itself. So mainly X is the independent variable. That's what uh, we understand. We try to uh, understand that how is, how can I vary my X? How fast can I vary max? So in an octave scale, octave scale, again, this is one, two, three, four, that is fine. But here, every time I walk one unit distance, my previous, like my current value gets, uh, current value is equals to then my uh, current value gets multiplied by two here is like uh, is the english written correctly if travel one distance then my value then my current value becomes i should write current value becomes i just i just write the uh, this thing correctly and then i will come back now like I have written the octave scale definition of change a few things. Uh, so if I travel here, what this means in octave scale, if I travel one unit distance, then my current value becomes two times of the previous value, two times of the previous value. Two times of the previous value. So this is about the decade scale and the octave scale. So now let's understand a few things that here, what does two times mean? Basically here, it means that let's say my value over here is Omega. Now I traveled one unit distance or you can say one octave here. If I travel one decade, that means my pre like current value becomes 10 times of the previous value. This becomes two Omega. This is one unit. So this is about the decade and octave scale. So this is uh, about all those things. Uh, we'll understand this slowly later on. Don't worry. So uh, just I wanted to give you a brief overview now, like to understand it fully. So we'll draw the scale like X axis. So mainly we're concerned in the X axis because Y axis is dependent on the Omega variable. So why we can't do much, but mainly we're interested in the X axis. But before that, I want to do one thing that I want to uh, give you a brief idea about the conversion between different number systems. What is the conversion? Basically from dec decimal to DBs. L we study right DBs uh, like we have already done this. I think yeah, we have already done this in gain margin and phase mining just to again refresh your memory that conversion conversion between uh, decimal to dbs
dBs. How do you convert? Simply if we have a number decimal, let's say x. So how to convert this into dBs? Simply we do 20 log base 10 x. That is how we simply convert it into dBs. So this is a simple thing. Now if you want to convert anything to octave, that also we will understand. This is into dBs. Okay or uh, dBs but in decade scale how we convert that is also we will understand in octave scale how we will convert that is also we will understand but for now this is in dBs okay we already know this but still wanted to give you a quick refresher of this one now now let's understand the scale of x axis so we have been given this function any function now here omega is written this can be f of x this can be f of z anything f of omega equals 2 omega for omega between uh, 0 to 1000 so if omega is between 0 to 1000, it is 2 omega and if it is outside the range, then it becomes 0. Now we have to plot f of omega, but here, right, the scale has changed. Just remember the scale has changed. We have to plot f of omega versus omega. That is a linear scale, simple omega that we used to do. That what That is what we have been uh, doing since our childhood. Now plot f of omega versus omega to the power cube root. So here the scales have been changed change of scale change of scale okay so this is about the uh, all these things now let's first plot this first one this is simple this is very simple what is this like this is a linear straight line this is a straight line with slope what 2 like i hope you understand slope what is slope slope is dy by dx you can already differentiate this or if you don't want to do that we can do one thing that we already know that this is a straight line 2 omega linear scale and this is also linear scale scale is linear here so this will obviously pass to the origin because at omega equals to 0 this is valid and this is equal to 0 itself so at omega equals to 0 let's take two points at omega equals to 0 this is 0 at omega equals to 2 this is what 4 so at omega equals to 2 this is 4 So what is the slope? Slope is simply like let's name this as point as B, okay? Like this point as B and this zero point as A, whatever you want to name. Slope is dy upon dx or like for a straight line we can simply write is like this y b minus y a by b minus a, where b is this two and a is zero. So what is my y? b like the value of my function at point 2 what is the value of the function at point 2 it is 4 so it is 4 so if it is 4 then what does this mean this means this has 4 minus 4 minus 0 like value of a function at uh, y x equals to or uh, omega equals to 0 0 so 0 minus b 2 minus 0 which is equals to 2 so my slope is 2 you can understand the coefficient like if you do the differentiation there also you understand the slope is 2 so very simple to understand nothing much difficult but uh, like i wanted to give you brief idea about the slope because this we will use uh, multiple times in the next uh, few lectures so we know right this is a straight line simple straight line and like it will be something upwards because my slope is 2 so if it's more than 1 so angle like at inverse 1 this totally cuts in the middle like 45 degrees happens but the angle increases slope is equals to also tan inverse uh, uh, like tan theta slope is also tan theta so I recall all these things so uh, there's this one here I can understand that my slope is Slope is uh, equals to two. So this is what my slope is. Now after this, what happens is that at thousand omega, this goes to zero. Sorry, uh, omega to thousand, this goes to zero. So obviously, what I can write is here. Like I will just assuming that here this is thousand. Okay. Oh, 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 like this is. Let's say this is. We are not writing the scale because if I write here two, 
then you might ask that sir this is a linear scale the distance will be equal so you just draw on and on and on so your ipad like you can't even cover the thousand value omega thousand value in this scale you have to go outside the ipad i have to draw in the wall itself so yeah we won't be able to do that that's why i won't write the scale over here that that was just to explain you okay so so that you don't get confused so here it goes to zero and it remains a zero so this is with the linear scale pretty simple not nothing fancy and stuff omega is 1000 this is and this is omega is zero i am not adding doing anything so at omega is 1000 what is my value it is 2000 it is 2000 so omega is 1000 it is 2000 so this is what mean uh this uh, value is this is this graph is now let's go to the next plot so in linear scale what, what do we mean like as i told right in linear scale each of these values are equidistant so i will write in linear scale so let's say uh like uh there have been uh linear scale each point is equidistant like here right as i told that in linear scale here all these are equal like from 1 to 2 if i travel then my value is also increasing by 1 okay from 2 to 3 if i travel my value is also increasing by 1 again it becomes omega plus 2 so each distance is distance between each point is equidistant so uh, yeah distance between each point is equidistant because like i cover one unit but here one unit increases from the previous value that is fine but here what is happening if i cover one unit of distance then i cover a large number like 10 omega from like omega it becomes 10 omega very large number so this is not equidistant so here like uh, this varies linearly here this varies linearly and it doesn't it doesn't so that is what the main point i wanted to get so linear scale is about that one we don't we have already explained that one previously now let's plot it for the decade scale so how do we plot it for the decade scale so what i will do is we have this yeah so now i will write few things here i will write the few things so this i can write this is 1 this is 2 and this is 3 here as you can observe this is a decade scale so just be careful just be careful if this is omega by 1 by 3 then the unit of this one what will be the unit of this one unit of this one will be radian per second cube root unit of this one will be radian per second cube root so it won't be radian per second okay the scale has changed it will be radian per second cube root but some confusion comes i will explain where that confusion comes we will clear that one but for now as this is the scale has changed it isn't omega anymore it is omega by omega or cube root of omega so this becomes radian per second 1 by 3 i hope you understand so now this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 so this is omega omega cube root of omega equals to 1 cube root of omega equals to 2 cube root of omega equals to 3 but then what is my value of omega what is my value of omega if cube root of omega is 1 then what is my value of omega so from here we can define that like for let's do it for 0 first that if omega by 1 by 3 is 0 then what will be my omega equals to omega will be because simply zero so we'll write this in very small font so that it can fit in omega is zero now if my omega by 1 by 3 equals to 1 then what does my omega become omega is also equals to 1 now if my omega by 1 by 3 is equals to 2 then what does my omega become what does my omega become omega becomes uh, 8 so we have to take the whole cube on both sides omega becomes 8 now now if my omega by 1 by 3 becomes uh, 3 then this omega becomes 27 and i will go on till omega by 1 by 3 equals to 10 then 
this will become 1000 cube of 10 is 1000 so this is what my omega becomes this is what my omega becomes now uh, like what we can understand is that just by one, two, three values, I'm covering a large amount of distance. These are not equidistant anymore. These are not equidistant anymore. In terms of omega, I'm talking about. In terms of omega, these are not equidistant anymore. Okay. But in terms of log of, uh, so not log, omega one by three to the power, obviously this is equidistance. But in terms of equidistance, like in terms of omega, if I talk about, these are not equidistant anymore. So like, what is the case? So at this one value, Okay, at zero value, like this is omega zero. What was the value of my function at omega equals to zero? Let me copy the function. At omega equals to zero, my value is like function of the value of the function is zero. So here, right, I'm plotting f of omega in this axis, y axis. I'm plotting f of omega. So this is f of omega. So value of my function at omega equals to zero is zero itself. So I'm not talking about omega y one over three. So I'm converting the scales. First, the scale is omega to the power one by three, but I convert it into simple omega so that I can directly plug in the value of omega there and I can directly compare it. So here, if the scale is zero, so this is also zero. F of omega is also zero. So this is zero. Now what is happening next? Now, if my omega one by uh, omega to the power one by three becomes one, this omega is also one. And if I plug in omega equals to one in that function, my F of omega becomes two. So it will be two simply simply two that is fine so now until now it is straight line looking like a straight line but what is happening after this so here if i put omega by one by three equals to two then omega is omega is eight if omega is eight if i plug in there it becomes two omega it becomes 16 so 16 is much much higher over here 16 is much much higher over here so it will be something like here and three will be also higher okay and until this is not like a straight line there's something else so it will be something like this. This is not a straight line. Not a straight line. Okay. Why this is not a straight line? This is not a straight line because uh, we can understand that this is increasing at a much faster rate than this. Like every every unit we are traveling our omega is not increasing linearly our omega is not increasing linearly it is increasing in some other fashion as you see right i'm traveling unit distance here but omega is increasing some something like this so omega increased one step here omega increased by seven omega increased by 19 here omega is increase, uh, increasing by much faster after this so i hope you are getting it that omega is increasing omega is not increasing linearly omega by one by three is increasing linearly but omega is not increasing linearly that's why this is not a straight line so I will write my scale is obviously linear but the scale value is omega by 1 by 3 so omega by 1 by 3 is increasing linearly but Omega is increasing non linearly. So, this is the main case. Just hold on a second. So, this is the main case. So, here, but what we do in actuality. What do we do in actuality? In actuality, we actually write it here. Okay, we actually write it here. And we assume, we assume that this is internally known to us that the scale is different. We just write the omega value because uh, if some engineer or someone sees the graph, he directly needs the radian per second value and not that cube root value. Okay, the directly needs that. So we directly write the converted values in this axis, but the scale is this one. Okay, so it is internally understood that here my scale is different so here scale is omega by 1 by 3 but i write the values here as radian per second but the scale is omega by 1 by 3 so scale is like this in 1 2 3 but what does this one represent 
लाइक वट डज दिस वन रिप्रेजेंट दिस वन रिप्रेजेंट इन ओमेगा वैल वैल्यू वन दिस टू रिप्रेजेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ ओमेगा एट सो आई विल राइट माई स्केल लाइक दिस This is zero, one, eight, twenty-seven, and after a while, this goes to thousand. So I will write it like this. So, but my y values won't change, obviously. Y values will still be same. So it will be something like this, parabola, something like this. I'm like I don't know exactly. I'm just drawing it how how it's supposed to be. I'm, I don't know exactly. Okay, so it won't be like this. It will be something. Okay, so this is like this. Now, this is the main thing. The scale they won't write anywhere. They will. This is un internally understood by us that the scale is like this. Obviously, there is some different scale that we use. This is the scale that we use. The final one that uh, final example that we'll do. This this is the main scale that we use. But for now, like just understand with the example of cube root. So cube root is a scale, but we don't write it like this. This is messy. This is messy. Like. If you give it to someone, some engineer or your manager or someone, he might ask, "Why have we written it like this? We are not concerned with this unit radian per second one by three under root. We are not. We are not concerned by this. We are. We are. We are. We will only use the radian per second unit. So we want to write here omega itself. Okay, that's why I write here omega also. But it is understood that the scale is one th scale is uh, omega to the power one by three. Why is that the case? Why do we want the scale like that? will understand that but from here you can get a brief idea why we want that so if we like as i told in the previous example if i wanted to write like this is 1000 but in reality if I, if i write a 1 over here can we write a 1000 over here no because the distance has to be equal distance in linear scale and obviously i can't reach 1000 i have to like cross over this uh, uh, this ipad itself but in other scale like in uh, logarithm scale in cube root scale whatever scale i can simply get 1000 just in 10 iterations so here Distance will be same, and in ten iteration, I can fit in thousand values of omega. Okay, that is why we do it to fit in more values. Also, there are other reasons. I will explain this. So, yeah, that is one thing. So, scale is hidden. So now, let's go to the next scale. So this is the second scale. This one was the first scale. Okay, and now go to let's go to the second third scale. <coughs> Log of ten omega. So obviously, they will not write. This is the scale that we use in Bode plots. Uh, why? Because this this covers a higher range, higher range. That's why. Because we want to plot for the all frequency ranges of my amplifier. So like, if you have studied analog electronics, great. If you haven't, so let's say you want to study the frequency response of a amplifier. So you just don't want to study it for one kilohertz or Ten uh, kilohertz. You want to study it for a broader range. How it performs over a broader range of frequencies. So you wanted you wanted to see it for ten megahertz, one gigahertz. So obviously, you want to see for both ends. You want to see for one kilohertz as well and one gigahertz as well. Now seeing the both ends on the same graph is difficult. It's difficult if you use a linear scale because it will take a lot of space, lot of space. If you take a log scale, then it will it will not take a lot of space. You can reach from one. Kilohertz to one gigahertz in few steps, right? Few distances you can reach there, but with simple scale you can't. With simple linear scale you can't because we just increase by one value, equal distance, one value. That is difficult. That is the reason. So you might say, sir, but we can reduce the distance. We can reduce the dis like uh, one unit distance there. Yes, we might. We might be able to do that, but we may lose information over there also. So that is one thing. So here, that is the main thing. So yeah, let's do it for log scale. So Here, let me mark the points: zero, one, two, three. Okay, zero, one, two, three. Now, this log, this distance, every one unit distance here is called one decade, as I told previously. Also, you can see decade, right? One unit distance is known as one decade. So, this distance is known as one decade. This distance is known as one decade. Now, if this is is known as one decade, what does this mean? So, if we move one decade, then how much are we actually traveling? Ten times. So, as I explained in the previous case, this I will explain here here uh, more clearly. So, here let's write again the table. So, here I am not writing the unit of uh, radian. It is something. Uh, it, the unit will be something like this. Log of 10 radian per second okay 
this will be my unit okay so this is all my unit is now let's uh, obviously write the values so here if i put log of 10 omega equals to 0 what do we get can we get anything log of 10 omega equals to 0 it is simply equals to 10 raised to power 0 is omega equals to 1 omega equals to 1 we get okay now log of 10 omega let me put this here use different color equals to uh, 1 1 inward distance at our world so what does my omega become now omega becomes 10 so you can see right it get it gets multiplied by 10 from the previous value as i explained in the definition itself now here next case log omega equals to 2 then omega like i have already studied like uh, we have uh, already taught like i have already taught you the concept of logarithm so that is what i am using here it becomes 100 and log of 10 omega equals to three omega becomes one thousand okay omega becomes one thousand so here as you can see it gets multiplied by ten every time but i am already starting from omega to one but i want to start from even before that how do i start even before that so you do one thing that you put here log of ten omega equals to minus one if you put that what you will get is omega equals to point 0.1 okay we're going to one one so you, you can start from point 0.1 or one okay whatever is your uh, decision but like uh, we we'll start we we'll starting from zero it doesn't matter so here like obviously it can go extend till negative also so what we can do is this right this is the first weird scale that origin is not zero over here So this is minus one. This is minus one. So and like it can go until ne uh, infinity, negative infinity. It can go until negative infinity. Why? Because like here, this omega can never be zero. What is log of zero? Log base of ten. Log base ten of zero. You search, search Google search or do something, or you know mathematically. If log base ten of zero is what is negative infinity it's it's undefined it's negative infinity like the graph of log is something like this if you remember correctly this is the graph of log okay so yeah uh yeah so basically now can i write this in our normal scale this is in log scale this is very messy scale i don't want to write it like this i want to write it in terms of frequency radian per second in terms of omega so how will i write it like that so firstly from here we can understand for, for one decade movement we, our omega gets uh, omega gets multiplied by 10 okay i will write here I, i'm not uh, writing the y axis right now like plotting the y axis just uh, talking about the scale itself As explained right omega omega gets multiplied by 10 for one decade of movement so uh, like how will i write it in terms of omega scale so this one like as i started from minus one over there so this will be point one 1 10 and 100 then 1000 this one will be like this so in just four steps i am able to cover the whole range okay obviously this uh, zero range zero i am not able to but i can go uh, before that also in just four steps like here i needed thousand steps in linear scale 
here i will need few more steps like less than 1000 but more than 10 uh, more than yeah more than four steps okay so yeah that is why we use this skill this is very uh, useful to us to cover a broader range of frequencies so yeah and also one more thing is that if we go from this one to here this means this means one decade down one decade down and if you go from here to here this means one decade up one decade up one decade down and one decade up or one decade below or one decade above whatever you want to have right so but here uh, we can't plot we can't plot the omega equals to zero we can't because log of uh, zero is infinity and obviously like how can i write infinity over in the scale impossible right impossible like how can i write inf infinity infinity is on the left more side which i am not able to reach i'm not able to reach like uh, right in this uh, my ipad ipad so we can't plot for omega like we can uh, plot for omega equals zero but we don't even need omega equals zero because we are plotting the frequency response and in frequency response we don't need uh we don't need uh that dc dc value that omega zero it means what a dc signal we, we are not concerned with dc signal we're concerned with ac signals ac so ac has frequency something non-zero frequency so it will be greater than zero so we're not even concerned with that so it, it is not even a con it is not even a con but here what we can see is that at omega goes to 0.1 uh, what is my value it is 0 0.2 so this is still a linear scale right now i'm not talking about db scale still a linear scale right now still a linear scale okay not talking about the db scale so here this is 0 0.2 at omega to 1 this is 2 at omega to 10 this is what 20 so this becomes much larger 100 it becomes 200 much larger so it goes on like this something parabolic shape so obviously this is not like linear my response is not linear that is one thing to note here response becomes non-linear okay in graph but how we make that linear we'll understand that we'll understand that so the response is something like this okay so this is So this is my f of omega so here i have already written in short form so one decade means multiple of tens and one octave means multiple of two octave scale i have uh, like uh, explained to you that it becomes multiple of two so here what is the scale basically here a scale like x becomes log base 2 of x and here x becomes log base 10 of x so this is what we convert right we convert the scale itself to cover broader range to cover broader range so uh, uh, like how do you how do you understand how do you understand so let's say i want to cover one decade of distance one decade of distance so how do you understand so this this is the distance right this is one decade distance so one decade of distance should be called simply let's name this as x2 i will just uh, use some different color name this as x2 and this one as x1 so x2 minus x1 now what is x2 minus x1 this is just remember this is in log scale this is in log scale okay this is i'm talking about the one decade distance i'm not talking about simple omega difference not simple omega difference. this is in log scale so what are the log values this is log of uh, this uh, omega 2 so this one so yeah let me just not write it like this one else you will get confused did not write it like this one so this is this becomes log of uh, log of omega 2 so what is the value of omega here the value of omega here is this so like you can understand from this scale like i meant it here sorry for the confusion not here else you will get confused let's name this like this x1 minus x2 so x1 minus x2 is one decade obviously that is fine 
and what does this represent x1 minus x2 it represents log of log base 10 of omega 1 and omega 2 so this is log base 10 of name this as omega 2 minus log base 10 of omega 1 so log base 10 of omega 2 by omega 1 so log base now omega 2 by omega 1 so if this is the case omega 2 by omega 1 so uh, what is this so omega 2 by omega 1 so here omega 2 is 10 and omega 1 is 100 so we can understand from here right like if we defer these two so what is this the formula that i explained log m minus n equals to log m by n i have explained that formula already so if we subtract these two if we just subtract these two here I get one decade of distance and this will become log of this omega 2 by omega 1. Here I have written omega, don't get confused. So this will be omega 2 by omega 1. So what is omega 2 by omega 1? It is simply uh, 10 itself, 10 itself, right? 10 itself. So like, sorry, uh, omega 2 is 100 and omega 1 is 10. So yeah, that is how you understand that we are, we are covering. This becomes 1. This comes out to be 1. Okay. Or from here you can derive that yeah one decade distance is omega 2 by omega 1 so what is my omega 2 so from here log properties we can use so 1 equals to log 10 omega 2 by omega 1 so I can use my properties that uh, 10 raised to power 1 equals to omega 2 by omega 1 so omega 2 will be equals to 10 omega 1 as I told right it will be multiples of 10 of the previous value this is the proof of basically the decade scale so one decade if you are moving so uh, like it becomes current value becomes the 10 times multiple of the previous value what about my octave scale what about my octave so this was about the decade octave will have similar proofs So octave, one octave, one octave is basically equals to what? One octave is let's say x two minus x one. But here the log b is changes. It becomes log of b is two divided by omega two minus omega one. Or like you can say it like this. First, like let me write it. which is equals to 1 octave itself so 1 equals to this so 2 raised to power 1 equals to omega 1 so omega 2 goes to 2 omega 1 okay so uh, this is the uh, basic relationship between like uh, not relationship between the octave scale and the normal omega 2 omega 1 so it becomes twice as i explained further now can i explain that if i move one octave in the uh, what is it in the uh, uh so yeah if i move like one octave then how much did i move in decade scale if i move one octave like let's say i'm telling you this is the decade scale right I'm telling you I move one octave in this scale then how much do I move in decade scale the in decade scale this is like if omega 2 becomes 10 times of the previous one omega 1 then I moved one decade but if I move one octave that is if my omega 2 is twice the previous one then how much decade did I move this scale conversion we may have to do because sometimes the question may come in octave scale and we have to convert it into decade scale they just give you a trick question to uh, to understand that uh, do you uh, like um, to know that do you 
अंडरस्टैंड द स्केल कन्वर्जन और नॉट सो वन ऑक्टेव सो आई विल राइट द क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस इफ वन ऑक्टेव इज हाउ मच डिस्टेंस इन डेकेट स्केल सो हाउ डू यू प्रूव दैट हाउ डू यू प्रूव दैट बेसिकली वट यू डू वट इज हैपनिंग सो लाइक वट इज माई डेकेट डिस्टेंस सो डिस्टेंस इन डेकेट is log of 10 omega 2 by omega 1 now let's say if my omega 2 becomes 10 of omega 1 obviously i moved total one decade now what is my omega 2 is becoming one octave so one octave means one octave means equals to 2 omega 1 so omega 2 equals to 2 omega 1 so this becomes log base ten of two, log base ten of two. Ten of two. Now obviously you calculate this one. This one you have to remember this one. I will I will recommend you to remember this one. This is in the unit of this one is in decades. Distance in decades. So this is the unit of this is decades. So just I will recommend you to remember. Highly recommend you to remember what is log base ten uh, of two. So log base ten of two is point three zero one. You can remember three also, but three uh, zero is a good number because this three is very important. This log base ten of two is very important to us. That's why I will recommend you to remember this one. So this is in point, sorry, point three decades. Okay. So one octave one octave is point three decades. Now you can simply use that uh, like divide by point zero three. Point three in both sides, and you will get what is one decade equals to. What is my one decade equals to? One decade equals to basically will be three octaves, three octaves. Or what you can do is use this formula again. Okay, I will just copy paste this one, and I will change few things. What is one decade? How much one decade is how much in octave scale? Okay, then obviously my omega two becomes ten omega, and distance in octave is basically this becomes log base two because in octave we use the log base two in octave. You just understand the unit conversion. This will be used. Obviously, when you solve questions, you will understand it better. But here you may get a brief idea that what is happening. Or you can simply divide this like both sides, and you will get one decade equals to three octave. That also you can get. This becomes ten. Like omega two omega two is ten. This almost is equals to three. Okay, almost is equals to three, but it is something more than three. That is two. Almost like three point three three. So this becomes octave. Ticket. This, like we can assume it almost will be equal to three, but uh, the correct one will be three point three three. Almost equal to three octave. Like when approximated, one was equal to three octa. Okay, so as you can observe that uh, if I cover like if I cover one octave, we have to only cover point three times of decade scale. So we have to cover less for covering like the same amount of distance. So which one is preferable? Obviously, decade scale is preferable. So we have to cover uh, like less amount of distance, and we are covering wider range of frequencies. For covering less amount of distance, so obviously decade scale is preferable here. So here, if I cover one decade in the scale, if I cover one, if I want to cover one decade distance in the octave scale, I have to go three times. 
three times octave so it is not beneficial to me right it is not beneficial to me so you might ask sir so it might so happen there is one decade there can be more so we can use the log base 20 also we have used log base 10 we can use log base 20 also so there is a limitation right so we don't want too much higher values because that will also reduce the information that we get in the y-axis also okay if we, if we compress the scale too much the information that we get in between the values that also gets reduced so we have to find a perfect balance between these two that's why we have chosen decade scale which is best for us which is best suited for us because we can cover the wide range of frequencies also and we can uh, get most of the information from that with the decade scale so decade scale is preferable sometimes the question comes in octave scale so you may either have to convert it into decade scale or you solve the question using octave scale also i will solve it using the both methods so here few points i have written already explained why log scale is used in x-axis to plot larger range of omega now low frequency range uh, low frequency region can be expanded how like as you you are seeing right 0.1 i have to plot minus one okay for 0.1 i have to plot uh, i have to put here minus one for 0.1 for 0.1 omega to 1 i have to put minus 1 for omega to 0 0.001 i have to put minus 2 so i'm covering like this is wider range wider range right wider range so i'm covering one decade just for plotting that much 0 0.1 0 0.2 point, uh, point 0.001 so yeah lower frequency can be expanded so if someone is very interested in lower frequency it will be expanded higher frequency is getting comp compressed okay and in between it is it is okay so in if you just uh, uh, go in your uh, shop shop right if you go in a stationary shop and you asked for semi log play, paper so board a plot is plotted in semi log graph Semilograph. Now, in semilograph, what you will observe is for lower frequencies, you will see that it is very expanded. For higher frequencies, it is getting compressed, compressed and more. So, yeah, lower frequencies can be expanded. And if someone is interested in the low frequency region, they can easily find the characteristics from that. So, yeah, that's why this uh, log scale is also used. That is also an advantage of this one. Like, yeah, I have already written this. Body plot is plotted in semilog paper. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, I have already written this, and I don't know. I was, I was, I wasn't paying attention to this. So, I hope you understand, right? So just to give you like a small overview, this is one, this is 10, this is 100. So like what will happen is like for one centimeter distance, for one centimeter distance, you are able to cover one radian. Okay. One decade. Then for one centimeter, this is not, this is not one radian. Sorry. So let's say this is 0.1. Okay. Previously this was 0.1. So you can see uh, the what is the range of here? 0 0.9, 0 0.9. Okay, and your scale. Let's say your scale is one centimeter. Let's say like this uh, distance is one centimeter in actual graph paper. One centimeter. So what is the difference? This is the actual values of omega. These are the actual values of omega itself. So 0 0.9 is the range. 0 0.9 is getting distributed in this one decade itself. Here, what is the range? Nine is getting distributed in the one centimeter. One centimeter in the actual distance. I'm talking about length. And here. Uh, 90 values are getting distributed here and here like next I will have thousand so 990 values uh, uh, 900 values are getting distributed here. so here it is getting expanded right 0 0.9 is getting distributed in the same area the uh, same length as this 900 values are getting distributed okay so yeah as you can see that's why they say that uh, log scale is uh, like uh, low frequency region is expanded low frequency region is expanded that is the reason so, but what are the limitation? What are the limitation? Limitation is in log scale, we won't be able to plot omega zero because, because equals to minus infinity. So obviously that is not possible. Uh, but practically, as we are looking on the frequency response, so for frequency response, for frequency response, my omega should be greater than equals to zero like not equals to because we're not concerned with the decision so omega is anyways greater than zero because my sine 
जीरो टी और बाई कॉज जीरो टी डजेंट मेक मच सेंस डजेंट मेक मच सेंस ओके डजेंट गिव मी एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन डजेंट गिव मी एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन so yeah this is like this one so it doesn't give because this is basically a dc signal because sin 0 of t is what 0 itself and cos 0 of t is what 0 1 uh, itself so doesn't give me any any other information so this is what we did so what we learned basically we learned about logarithms we learned about scales and we learned about bode plots so let me give you a quick overview so these were the first few properties about the log right first few properties of the log Firstly, I have explained to you that like a frequency response can be divided into two parts. One is magnitude response and phase response. That is what we will plot in Bode plots. So in Bode plots, we will plot magnitude response and phase response. Then we understand the few basic properties of logarithm. Got stuck a bit about the properties sometimes. Like it has been a while since I studied. So yeah, sometimes it happens that uh, we tend to forget things. So yeah, these were the few properties. I hope you remember. Now I talked about the linear scale. Here in linear scale, every point omega is equal distance. Equal distance. So Every point is equal distance. Okay, but in uh, this decade scale, every point is not equal distance because this is in decade scale. Okay, but this is not the actual value of omega as we have understood in the next few examples. Decade scale, if I travel one unit distance, that is one decade, then my current value becomes ten times of the previous value. That is what uh, the definition says. And in octave scale, if I travel one unit distance, that is one octave, then my current value becomes twice of the previous value. So that is what we basically did. So here I have also told you about the conversion of from decimal to decade, normal absolute values to uh, decimal. Yeah, sorry for the sneeze. Actually, so here I have explained how to convert to decimal to dBs. So this is also very simple. Next, we understood what do we mean by scale of x-axis. We are changing the scale, like what we used to do. We used to plot in linear scale, but now we are changing the scale. How? Like this is linear scale and this is simply straight line slope. No issues with that. No issues with that. Slope definition also I have given. This will also this is also this will also get used. So this is slope definition that we will use. So this is the case. now uh here we change the scale so as soon as i change the scale what happened we can cover more range of values so but this is not in radians per second we want it to write in radians per second so we write it in terms of radians per second but the scale is still same it's in cube root now uh, omega by 1 by 3 omega to the power 1 by 3 so but my y y uh, like variation changes as my x variation is changing very fast so my y variation will also change very fast so obviously it will not be linear because here my x variation is not changing linearly my y variation will also not change linearly because previously as my x was changing linearly my y was also changing linearly but here my x is not changing linearly hence y also also will not change linearly how it will change we'll understand we'll understand so then we actually plotted in decade scale okay and here we understood that each distance is 10 times of the other one and we found the relationship between octave and decade scale how they are interrelated and yeah that's how uh, like we understood the advantages of log scale and what we can't do in log scale okay and in the next uh, next lecture we'll start with bode plots how to plot the bode plot and do few examples and why you use bode plots why is it so much useful and uh, is there any approximation involved in bode plots or is it a actual plot exact plot let's under, let, we will understand that one we understand also the uh, meaning of asymptotes so yeah uh, thank you for watching in this lecture and i will see you in the next lecture